Eva, and this is a Hard Rock University Lab Edition. We're doing something a little different today with our electrolytic debris. Normally, when we've been smelting this, I know that for the amount of debris we usually get, we usually get beads about that size. Last time, we got an outsized bead. We not only got an outsized bead, the fusion did not act normally when it was going on in the furnace, and the button was extremely brittle and fractured when I brought it out of cupellation. So, like any good scientist, I saved everything, folks. This is the slag that was used in that particular bead that had an unusual reality. This is the same crucible that the original sample was done in. So we have here some random electrolytic debris that are not tied to anything. What I'm going to be doing is mixing it up with extra charcoal, a little bit of litharge, and re-smelting this so that if there's any precious metals trapped in that slag, they're going to come out and join this. So that's what we're doing today. Now, are you confident that this slag here is able to absorb enough impurities so that that will take care of that? Yes, I am, and okay. also I am adding a small amount of the standard constituent silica, soda, ash, and borax to it as a little bit of addenda to pick that up. So you're going to have a full charge of used slag, a little bit of fresh slag, a fair amount of fresh litharge, some more charcoal to reduce the litharge, and this debris. Yes, and this is a smaller amount of debris than we usually work with. This is only 1.38 grams. Okay. So, I'm now ready to start mixing everything together here. Just for purely informational purposes, I have discovered in working in this process in particular, a good ratio of your silica, soda ash, and borax. Your silica and borax should be in a four to three ratio. So in this case, I used eight grams of silica and six grams of borax. Your soda ash should be about five times the size of your charge. So there's 10 grams of soda ash in there. We've got 20 grams of litharge in there, which should absolutely be enough to grab everything that is anywhere in the area. And there is two grams of charcoal in there, which absolutely should be enough to reduce anything that is in there. So now we'll combine it together and give it a nice, long, slow fusion in my trusty furnace. Okay, it's about time to get this smelt out. We have done a nice, long, slow fusion. And I just saw the lead button drop. Now, I'm sure we're expecting here. We may get an oversized button because if there was lead present in that slag, there was enough carbon in there to reduce some of it out. I cannot make any prediction about the bead we're going to get. It was 1.82 grams of debris. Historically, this type of debris was usually about 35 to 40 percent precious metals. But we don't know whether there was any precious metals trapped in that slag. We don't know where this debris is on our precious metal scale. So, anybody's guess what kind of a bead we're going to see in a few minutes. Right now, we're just going to wait for that slag to explode so we can get the button back in there and turn it into a bead and find out what's going on. And in the meantime, I'm going to take a look at this in the sunlight. One of the characteristics of a good slag is that it prevents degradation and erosion of your crucibles. This crucible has been in use well over a year. 
and because I keep a very careful eye on my slag, it's still in really good condition. At the moment, I am not seeing any beads of metal, precious or otherwise, on the walls. So that looks like a clean pour. It's going to sit there and cool. Very shortly, we should hear this explode. And we got really good separation from the look of things and one very cute little button that we are going to clean and weigh and find out where we are. You can go ahead and you can go ahead and use the tweezers and dunk it in the water over there if you want to there. I may crack that stuff right off if you do. Pretty cool right now. Let's go find out what it weighs. And that is our slag. It's going to be weighed in a couple of minutes and all the information put in the records so we can do a mass balance. But if you take a look, you can see this got some beautiful separation and we got feathers and what I like to call radial fractures. I didn't get a picture of it when we took the cover off, but a good pour will resolve in slag that fractures in a nice sunburst pattern and this is a very common color for good slag with the material that we've got then my slag is weighed and microscopically examined what i'm looking for there is how it broke what different colors or iridescence may be in it and whether there are any little micro beads of metal still left in there which there were not. This is nice clean slag. It's still reserved. I save everything. Okay, so let's see what we have. There he is. It did not flick. It did not flick. That means it is more than 30% gold. It is yellow in color. It's a really good thing. It is pretty darn big. Just going to quench it off in there so we can touch it. Let's go find out if it's in the back one ways. For this we use the nice scale. Point six nine five. And what did you start with? We started with one point three eight. So let me get a calculator and see where we are. Huh? Wrong way. Other way. Yeah, I know. Just about half, which makes it higher in precious metal content than we usually see from this type of debris. The color is also a brighter yellow than we normally see from this type of debris. We do not know whether any of this was from the last bead we did or it was all from this debris. Either way, it goes in there with all the others. The reason I took the time to do this, you always save everything and whenever you get an anomalous result, if you can try to recover anything you might have missed, it's a good idea to do it. And there have been times when I have recovered some pretty interesting stuff redoing and reprocessing old slag. So that is where we are. You want to finish it? Happy prospecting and keep it safe out there.